Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here then hi, my name is Miss Paris and I'm a newly qualified primary school teacher here in the UK. Now due to current developments I decided that I would try and make a series of virtual learning tip videos. So this is probably going to be a part one of two videos that I do on Microsoft Teams because I know that your time is precious so I just want to be concise and give you the information that you need. So today's video is going to be about how to set up run and go through the features um, that you have available to you when you are doing calls on Microsoft Teams. So I'm just going to get straight into it, go to my computer and show you live as I do it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for more teacher content. Let's get into it. Okay, so Microsoft Teams is a platform where you can utilize and find lots of different apps in one place, such as most Microsoft programs or apps. It's all cloud-based, so you can log in from anywhere and you'll have it all there. There's nothing stored on your PC and you can access it from multiple different devices. As you can see here, this is obviously the teacher login. We've got activity, chat, teams, which I won't open because I'm obviously part of a team, assignments, calendar, and if you ever want more options, Depending on your device, you might have limited options that are visible. You can press on the three dots and this is where you can see other features such as files, calls, the notebook, shifts, OneNote, stream and so forth. For the children, it will be a lot more basic. They won't have access to chat, anything like that. Um, obviously that's for their safety, but it also means that they can't contact us directly. They also don't have the calendar function so that they, you know, could organize a meeting and then meet up with their friends without an adult present. They just have assignments and files. So like I said in the introduction, what I'm going to show you today is how to schedule a meeting for the children. So to do this, you're going to have to go on to calendar, which is here on the side. And then you have to pick your time and date. I don't know, let's say Wednesday. Obviously you can add a title. So if you're doing year four French or you know year three English, whatever it is, you can write it there. When you put here your required attendees, this is where you can select a certain channel. So by channel, I mean which adults and class members you select. So you could have specific channels, which could be focus groups or intervention groups, or you could just have a general channel, which includes all the adults and all the children in that class. So if you were doing year three English, you might want to choose the name of your class so that you can have all the attendees just there and that they will all get the notification. In terms of what they'll receive and how they can join, I will go through that in a second. So then you can see I've got the time and the day already done. And then you can also put some details in this section below so that, you know, they know what they're doing or if they need anything, you could say bring piece of paper, da da da. And then you're going to press save in the top right hand corner. When you have scheduled your meeting and you have saved it, all the details have gone off, what actually happens? When we receive meeting invites personally, we often get a link through email. Um, it might depend on the settings, but I don't think children actually have access to email. So what they will receive is they will receive a meeting notice that will arrive on a post in their post page. It's almost like a notice board. They will click on this and open the invitation. If they are on the right date, at the right time, they can then join in. For teachers, when you join a meeting, I would recommend having yourself muted and your video turned off to make sure the children don't see anything you don't want them to see. If you have the app version, there's also quite a cool function. You can pick a background so that they can't see your home behind you if you are working at home, or you can blur the screen. So if you've got any family photos behind you or anything like that, it can be blurred. It's almost as if you're in front of a green screen. Once you're on the call, you will have, if you kind of wiggle your mouse, this bar that comes up with several options. So like I said, this is the icon if you want to turn your camera on or off. The one next to it is the mic and this one right next to it. So the third one from the left is a very useful one. It's called the open share tray. And if you click on it, it gives you an option of what you want your children to see. So they might, if you want to show them a whiteboard and you're going to kind of do some modeling, if you have a PowerPoint, you can pick the PowerPoint. What is quite a common selection is the desktop slash window. 
That means that whatever is on your screen, whatever you see is what they see. Next to it, you have the conversation button. So you can either show the conversation to make sure you are up to date with what people are saying, or you can hide this. Alongside that is the show participants. So if you are expected to take a register or just for you personally, you want to know who is there. Again, on this three button thing, if you press it, more actions come up and you've got things such as show meeting notes and start recording. With this recording option, normally it's nice to just let the children know that they are being recorded um, and what it will do is it will save to Microsoft Stream. Now if you remember on those three dots that were underneath calendar that was one of the options. Microsoft's team is almost like an online YouTube stream um, and it will all save there. So if you have multiple classes a day um, they will all save there for you if you have pressed the start recording option in your call. Um, when it has finished recording, you will get an automatic email linked to your Outlook account, um, which has those Microsoft same login details, um, when you are ready to access it, and it will give you a link as well. I also think this is good, not just for those that maybe didn't attend the call, but also for safeguarding reasons. You know, that way you've got proof of everything that happened, everything that was said. So I think it's just a good option to do when you are on a call. Finally, when you are on a call, there is also a really useful button and it's called the raise hand button. It's just a picture of a hand. When a child wants to say something urgently like, oh, I can't see this or miss the screen hasn't changed, they can press that raise hand button and you will get a notification where there is the icon that says show participants. So when you press on show participants, it will say, Bob has raised his hand. And so you know specifically who to talk to, you know, who has a problem. If you can't see it, it probably means that either your screen isn't on full or maybe you've got the meeting chat open, but you can always find it in the three dots. One last tip I would give is that when the meeting is finished, I would go onto your calendar and delete it because otherwise children, or obviously teenagers, they might go on that initial post and try to meet up with their friend without an adult present. So to do this, you go onto calendar, you press on the event and then you press cancel. And then when you do on the children's notice board, so on their account, it will say that the event has been canceled and it will come up, I think it's black or gray, so that they can't press on the link any longer. Okay, so that is the end of my video. I hope it was useful. I did try and go step by step, but sometimes doing it's easy to miss something or go too quickly. So again, if there's anything you weren't sure of, please let me know in the comments below. I know that for some, whether you're a trainee or actually an experienced teacher, Microsoft Teams is a kind of brand new experience. So if you think this could be beneficial to somebody as well as yourselves, please feel free to share this to either like your skit colleagues or you know a, a normal colleague. <laughs> I just want to make content that's helpful for you guys so I thought that this was a good place to start. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more teacher related content and I will see you soon. Bye!